Okay, we're ready to go. Commanding your consumer experience. Uh, today we're going to cover um, basically, you know, how to roll out the red carpet for your clients with our technology. Um, you know, different things that our tech is doing, different ways that you can be running Facebook ads and and responding to people and follow up plans and using your consumer app and using your guide and using your website, all that good stuff. That's what we're going to be covering today. And some of the things I've changed a little bit to kind of, um, to kind of be aware of, of, of the situation that we're in right now as a country, uh, cause I feel like it's going to be the new norm for, for several months. Um, so you might need to start pivoting some of your advertising, uh, accordingly so I threw some of that stuff in there and then of course I have stuff that once we kind of go back to normal in the future um, you'll also have a roadmap for that too so let's jump into commanding your consumer experience from consulting from consult to close and let's get started so um, there is a, a company there was a company um, in the late 80s early 90s and that company was called general magic and I talk about general magic in in my in my presentations uh, so if you are if you've ever seen one of my other presentations, you've you've seen this before, but I would like to start it off because with this because General Magic was kind of an offshoot of Apple in the late '80s, early '90s. Um, everybody who worked at General Ma Magic worked at Apple, and they kind of uh, left Apple and they they had an idea uh, to create this portable device that would uh, allow you to make calls, allow you to send text uh, not text messages but emails. Um, and it would allow you to uh, to connect to uh, what was not invented at that time, the World Wide Web. And that that piece of de that device that they had in mind was actually this, the iPhone, the iPad. And in 1988, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, obviously they were way ahead of their time. And everybody who was a part of General Magic um, still went on to amazing things. Um, one of the, the one of the interns. Um, went on to become the founder of Nest, which he sold to Google for $3.2 billion. One of them is the CEO and founder of LinkedIn. One of them uh, was the um, technology uh, director for the Obama administration. So lots of really smart people at that time still went on to do amazing things. And the reason I bring up General Magic is because General Magic was way ahead of its time, but the consumers weren't there. They didn't understand why they needed a device to carry around with them all the time and check what people are doing, right? Um, but now the thing is, the consumer is so far ahead in terms of their ability to use technology, and so we have, as an industry, has ki have kind of fallen behind a little bit. So while they're ready, we're not. When before, it was the opposite. So I watched this movie, General Magic, uh, on a plane. It's a documentary. You can find it on YouTube or Amazon. And I watched it on a plane. And I just want to show you the trailer. It's a two and a half minute trailer because it gives you a really great idea of what the movie is about and why it's important right now for us to be aware of where we are right now in terms of tech within uh, our country and within the company Keller Williams as a whole. So sit back and watch this two and a half minute trailer really quick and then uh, we'll move on from there. Oops, let me turn up the volume for you guys. No digital telecommunications industry. It did not exist. There were no digital cell phones. There was no World Wide Web. We're going to create what comes after the personal computer. It was essentially going to be a smartphone with a lot of intelligence. When we were talking about reinventing telephony, we meant it. We're trying to make something that people love. We need it to be like your watch, your glasses, your wallet. We decided to make everything. That meant we were custom building every piece. It's, it's insane. How small will it finally be? Someday, it takes your wristwatch. This was the beginning of what became, I think, the most important company to come out of Silicon Valley that nobody's ever heard of. It was this aura of secrecy. You know, it had Apple's fairy dust sprinkled on it. We had no idea what it was, but by the rumors, it seemed just captivating. We had no choice but to keep quiet about the things we were doing because other companies were interested in it as well. Now, it should be noted, John Scully was running Apple at the time. 
he was our ally, oh, so we thought. Today, we are launching Newton, a revolution for the pocket. They had uh, decided to make something essentially based on our original models. It's the most important thing that I've ever been involved with in my entire life. It's bad enough you get betrayed by them, but now they're going to try to put you out of business. That was fighting. That was bad. I mean, here's a test. What if general magic never happened? Would we have had Android? No chance. I mean, all these things were linked together, one after another. So much of what came out of general magic is the foundation of everything we take for granted today. And so the question is, can we take these powerful tools and do something that really does help a lot of people? The reason you should care about the story of general magic is because it involves something fundamental and that is, failure isn't the end. Failure is actually the beginning. Anyway, I love that movie. That two and a half minutes just gives you uh, an insight into what it was about. I would highly recommend watching that uh, since we're all stranded at home. Um, but uh, I love this, this quote, failure isn't the end. Failure is the beginning. And I think... Some of the reasons that I'm hearing about people not diving into command or our app is because they're, they're afraid. Like they're overwhelmed. They feel like they're going to screw it up. They feel like they don't know what they're doing. And that's okay. Like the way I, the way I figured it out, I'm not any smarter than anyone else on this call in terms of trying to figure things out. I just went in and I started clicking buttons and started figuring out what things did and just kind of connected the dots. And so sometimes we have to do that. Luckily, KW gives us all these Kelly guides and instructions on how to do things, but there's things within technology that we figure out on a regular basis with the iPhone, right? Like every time an iPhone does an update, there's no, there's no, uh, there's no instruction manual to figure that out. I got the iPhone 11 Pro with three cameras. It took me a couple weeks to figure out how to use the new camera, and I did it by an accident because there was no instruction manual. So um, we just have to get in there and start clicking around. Uh, when I hear agents saying, how do you do this, how do you do that, this, that, and the other, just go in and start pressing buttons, and then the, the really, like, the dots are going to start to be connected for you. So um, don't worry about falling flat on your face. Uh, test everything out with our technology on yourself before you test it out on anybody else. Um, so test out smart plans on yourself, home anniversary, happy birthday, test out uh, listing alerts on yourself, test out neighborhood nurtures on yourself, test out campaigns on yourself. And when you do that, you'll start to understand how things work and then you won't be afraid to implement it to other people. All right. So let's get into a little bit about the new um, profile of home buyers and sellers uh, that NAR recently released. And we went over a little bit about this at family reunion with Gary. I just want to go over some stats because it's really important to know uh, what people are doing. Uh, in the market. So 33% of recent home buyers were first time buyers. That's a huge number. Okay. And that means um, they're usually pretty tech savvy, right? So if there were five and a half or 6 million homes sold last year, 33% uh, of that, that's a big number. That's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of people buying their first home, right? Typical age was about 47. Um, but we also know millennials made up for a really big portion of that as well. And they're in their um, late 20s, early 30s, and we all know that they're using tech and they're using their smartphones. Um, something great that I love to see, 89% of home buyers uh, used their real estate agent uh, to buy their house. And NAR has reported that's actually the highest it's ever been in history, ever. So with all the disruptors out there, Zillow, Realtor.com, Open Door, whatever it doesn't matter people are still turning to real estate agents to help them navigate a transaction so that's an, a very important number uh and this is kind of funny to me because we all spend a lot of time wondering about why people are buying homes and the primary reason 29 percent of buyers said their primary reason for buying a home was just because they wanted to like that's it nothing crazy they didn't relocate because of a job you know, things of that nature. They just wanted to have a house. Um, so it's important to know uh, those statistics. All right, home sellers. Typical home seller is 57. 
89% of sellers worked with agents too to sell their house, which is huge. 34% of them offered, 34% of those uh, sellers offered incentives to attract buyers. And Keller Williams has their own incentives through Keller Mortgage, and we can we're going to talk a little bit about a little bit more about that later. Um, Ninety-nine percent of the recently sold homes, the final sales price was a medium ninety-nine percent of the final listing price, which means obviously we were in a healthy market in twenty nineteen. So lowball offers just aren't going to cut it. Um, okay, so working with a realtor, these are important stats to know as well. Helping finding the right home was uh, was uh, what 52% of buyers wanted when choosing a home. They wanted their agent to actually help them find the house, which is which is really cool. I love that they want us to be involved in the process in that in that capacity. 41% uh, of buyers used an agent that was referred to them by a friend or neighbor or relative. Huge, huge, huge number. 41% of uh, you know six million um, homes sold, uh, which you know let's just say 50% of those were buyers. Uh, that's a huge number. So your your database is extremely important. It's something that Gary has been preaching forever. So get into your database and start appreciating people and get those referrals. 90% uh, of buyers would use the agent again, um, but I think there's some crazy number that's like under 25% um, that's, that says like they typically don't use the same agent again. Um, they don't remember their name. That agent hasn't kept in touch. Um, something crazy like, it's because agents aren't, they're just not keeping in touch. At the moment, right then and there, uh, when it's fresh in their mind, oh yeah, it was a great time. You know, actually no, se I think it was like 70% of age of, of buyers say they would have not used the same agent again. So 90% say they would, and then 70% actually don't. And that's usually the fault of the agent for not keeping in touch and keeping that relationship going. 75% um, of sellers, uh, only contacted one agent before work before using that agent to list their house. So that's basically saying if you're not if you're not first in the door, um, there's a there's a there's there's a big chance you're not going to get that not going to get that listing. Sixty six sixty six percent of sellers found their agent uh, through a referral. So even more sellers are listing their house through referrals than buyers. Huge opportunity there for you guys. And 70% say they would recommend their agent to go. So 90% of buyers would use their agent again. 70% of, of sellers uh, said they would. So those are all really positive numbers that we have in our favor. It's just a matter of keeping in touch with our database and appreciating them so we can be a part of those numbers. All right, finding a home, right? All right, so important stats here. 44% of recent buyers um, that they polled uh, said that uh, they went to look online at properties for sale, right? That was one of like the first things that they did. So uh, the first step, 40% of buyers uh, took uh, the home buying process to look online at properties for sale. Ladies and percent uh, of recent buyers found their real estate agent to be very useful for information. That's, that's pretty incredible. So if you guys um, aren't leveraging all the neighborhood data and the Yelp data and the school data and the and the market data that we have on our on, at our disposal on our websites and apps and through all of those things that KW is giving us. Um, it's very important for people to be working with uh, to an agent that knows uh, how to navigate someone through a sale as well as what's going on in their local market. Okay, so buyers typically search for ten weeks. Um, uh, and looked at a median of nine homes. So they searched online for 10 weeks and they looked at about nine houses before they actually made an offer. So if you get a, a lead um, or a referral or something along those lines, that person is probably 10 weeks out. Um, if they've contacted you, uh, they're usually, um, th they say they're usually like two or three months away, like uh, from making that purchase. Um, so T buyers typically contact somebody, um, contact an agent when they're about 60 to 90 days out from wanting to make that purchase. So aspiring buyers, 50% you know, of them uh, don't own a home, um, which, which think about the other percent, think about the remainder of that, right? That means that almost 50 or almost 40% of the people who are buying a house have a house to sell. So 
Um, that's why I always run buyer ads because a question you should be asking is, do you currently rent or do you need to sell your home before you buy? So be aware of that. That's a, that's a big stat for us to remember. 70% um, of non-owners believe that home ownership is a good financial decision and 75% of non-owners believe home ownership is a part of the American dream. All right. So these are some cool little snapshots. Um, you guys can, they're, they're, you can find them online at the National Association of Realtors. I just like the infographics. Um, just kind of breaks it down in a lot more colorful way. 33% uh, are first time buyers in 2018. 24% um, had student debt. Um, the household income of a buyer in the last year or two was, was 90, just over $93,000. 50% bought a home in suburbia, 87% uh, bought a single family home, 12% was the median down payment, 89% bought their homes through a real estate agent or broker. These are really cool stats and helps you uh, when you're targeting or running ads or having conversations, because uh, you're most likely having a conversation with someone that meets these criteria. So seller snapshots, 44% actually wanted to buy a larger home. So um, that's the 43% that had a house to sell. They're, they're, they're increasing, um, they're, they're moving up. So you'll get a nice high sale and you'll also, uh, a listing and also be able to sell. Um, on average, they, they, they walked away with about 60 grand. Um, for the most part, they were in their house for about 10 years. Um, and believe it or not, they're not moving that far, right? About 20 miles away from where they lived previously. And also most of them used an agent. So I love those stats. Uh, and they're good things to take into account when you're having conversations. All right, let's get into some pain points that buyers are having. Um, and these are things that I looked up and that I have also uh, discovered through conversations uh, with, with buyers over the years that have been selling homes. I've been in the business for now 14 years. Um, and so I've had lots of conversations. Um, they don't like getting placed on irrelevant, irre, 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 irrelevant drip campaigns or kind of like, you know, cookie cutter drip campaigns. Uh, it's really good to customize when you can, and I'll show you how to do that. Uh, they get overwhelmed by sorting through listings, um, and our app and our website make it really easy to search a number of different ways so they don't have to be overwhelmed. Not having enough for a down payment. We're going to talk about how Keller Mortgage can help them save some money. Uh, lack of communication from their agent, that's a big pain point. Luckily, we have a consumer guide that can help them walk, the, walk them through the process uh, because like Josh, our president of KW says, they don't want an on-demand agent. They want an on-demand, they want on-demand information. So I'll show you how uh, we can utilize that. They just get really confused about the whole process. They don't know where to start. They don't know where, uh, how, where things go. Uh, they don't know what to do next. And, and those two, lack of communication and confusion, those are kind of you know, lumped into the same category. And, uh, and with those two, we're gonna utilize our guide and I'm gonna show you how to customize it and give you some ideas of how you can customize your guide. Uh, the experience seemed very agent-centric, right? Like you, the, when you go to an agent's website, you usually see like, oh, number one agent in the world, sold a million houses and I won all these awards, who cares? Like nobody cares, right? They only care that you're going to help them and that you care about them. And so a lot of the way our new tech is designed is through a lot of research about the fact that consumer doesn't care how many homes you sell and they don't care that you won best agent in, 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 in the Milky Way galaxy. They don't care about that. Um, they only care that you know how to help them and that you're knowledgeable about the process and the local market. And again, not enough information was shared with them. It's a lot, these are a lot of pain points. And before I put this together, um, I did some research and I asked some previous, um, I asked some friends that, 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 that bought some, that bought some houses. I, this is from talking to clients in the past, you know, things that I could have improved upon. Uh, so this is firsthand stuff. Um, I didn't just make it up. All right. So let's get into, um, oh, any questions up until this point before we go into how our websites are designed? No, I can't see you guys, so I don't know if there's any questions. Nick, just a quick question. Those stats and such that you were pulling and showing, yep. where on the NAR did you find that? Because I'm, I'm not- I just Googled uh, National, I just Googled National Association 
um, a realtor's home buyer profile 2019 and a bunch of a bunch of those uh, a bunch of that information came up on Google and like infographics and it could t- it'll, uh, it'll take you to some of those pages on the on our site um, so if you just Google NAR home buyer seller stats or home buyer seller report 2019 you'll find a whole bunch of info on that but if you guys want um, when I send out the recording I can send I can send uh, those slides to you if you if you want those if you want that stuff to make it easy for you. Yeah, that would be good. I I was just I I was looking at you know the infographics that you had. That is that would be great to be um, put on to our site to show that for yeah sure. we do have buyers still and yes we still have sellers um, because you look at the numbers and look at that. I also think it'd be great to have into a buyer consultation or a buyer or a seller consultation and say, Hey, listen, you know, um, majority of homeowners, a majority of people who bought homes or sold homes, you know, they only move 20 miles, right? Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, and so it's, it's good to know like, well, wouldn't you target, why aren't you going to target this area? Well, you know, statistically speaking, most of your buyers are going to come from less than 30 minutes away. Uh, so it's good stuff to have at your disposal, but yeah, I can send these to you when I send out the replay in the email. So that's no problem. You're awesome. Thank you, Nick. No problem. No problem. All right. So let's move on to any other questions. I don't want to, I don't want to, I want to, I want to answer questions as we get through certain segments. So I'm going to get into our website now. So if anyone has any questions about what I talked about before, just chime in for a few minutes and I can answer them for you. And if you're in the chat, I can't see the chat because I'm sharing my screen. Um, but I can reference those later. But if you want to unmute yourself, feel free. Otherwise, I'm just going to go to the next step. Um, All right, cool. So our website, right? So when we rolled out our websites um, for KW, the new KW agent sites, you know, there were a lot of people like, oh my gosh, there's no picture of me. And I don't get to show all my fabulous listings. And I don't get to show how many homes I sold. And so what's interesting is like Keller Williams did all that research for us and Zillow and realtor.com and homes.com. They spent billions of dollars uh, researching how, how can, how the consumer likes to search. So we didn't have to do that. Right. We didn't have to figure that out. If there's one good thing that Zillow did for us, it's they told us how consumers want to search for homes. So we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, And so let's look at some of the websites that are out there, the consumer portal. So homes.com realtor.com home page is identical except in the top left the logo that's it compass zillow identical home pages except for the logos in different places identical home pages kw agent sites this is the way it should look if zillow and compass have their sites like this if homes.com and realtor have their sites like this why shouldn't we have our sites like this? And by the way, it's very simple. There's no instructions. The only instruction is that's where you search. So a lot of agent sites have all these little widgets and buttons. And I'm like, what? This will keep people on the site. They already know how to use it. And they don't have to think about it because it's something that they're accustomed to. And so this is why we've decided uh, to create our websites like this, whether or not some agents like it, it doesn't matter, right? So that's what I was saying before about agent centric. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what you like. You're not the, you're not the buyer. You're not the seller. You're not the consumer. Um, you're the agent and you want, you, you were in a consumer, we're in a customer service business. So, um, we have to create things that the consumer is going to enjoy. And so if, if we're, if we're ignoring that, we're just putting stuff about ourselves that nobody cares about. They're not going to enjoy, uh, the experience. So your KW sites looked like this for a reason. And I, I know you love my hokey, um, colorful, uh, <laughs> like low budget slide, um, but it's the best I can do. Uh, so Zillow spent billions of dollars on search so we didn't have to. And KW agent site data uh, since family reunion, this is family reunion since this was February and so rewind six months prior to that, I think when, when our sites were released, they were released about six months prior to family reunion. This was the stats. They found that um, 
the 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 speed of our new websites compared compared to our old we're up 24 percent engagement on our uh on our new sites we're up 10 times over our previous sites traffic to our new agent sites we're up 25 times and the average time spent on site was four point uh, 8.4 minutes now that might not seem like a lot but um eight eight and a half minutes is like a lifetime it's like a lifetime right now when everything is so fast right so think about this on facebook when you're doing a video face when you see how many views your video got facebook counts a view as three seconds it counts uh, uh, and then and then there's another one where they they talk about um, a view of someone watches the entire thing they count an, a, a view of your video that someone watched in its entirety as 10 seconds all right so the fact that people are spending almost nine minutes on our website at one time is a, is an enormous amount of time so uh, it looks like we made the right decision We've designed our sites the right way, and we've designed it with the consumer in mind. And all of these, all of these statistics uh, are, are 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 clearly saying that we're paying off uh, with what we're doing. All right, I want to get into I want to get into a little bit about Facebook. Um, before I do that, does anybody have any questions about our websites in terms of how they look? I'm going to get more into functionality in a minute. But in terms of the last several slides that I showed, is there any specific questions when it comes to those? Okay, cool. You'll probably have more questions later when I get into the ins and outs and functionality. So Facebook 2019 real estate trends and insights reports. If you guys literally Google Facebook 2019 real estate trends and insights reports, you will find it. It's about 50 pages and it's really amazing. And it's the first a uh, full-on report and study about real estate behaviors on the Facebook platform. Um, lots of great insightful information. Just Google that. You'll be able to print it out and save it as a PDF or read it on your own time. There's a lot of great information. Um, but I just pulled a few, uh, a few stats that are important. So mobile is definitely dominant, right? Um, we don't need Facebook to tell us that. But, but uh, you should know that 70% of people uh, in the U.S. are now using smartphones. And... 53% are using tablets, um, and they're searching for homes on that. 89% uh, of U.S. real estate agent and broker media spend in 2019 went online. Um, and video is definitely the future. So video views in the U.S. Uh, right now, uh, about 83% of people on the Internet are watching uh, video uh, on their phone or tablet or computer. Right, so that doesn't whether it's Facebook Watch, YouTube, Netflix, it doesn't matter. Everything is being streamed through the internet, and that's where you guys need to be. All right, so let's get into data war. It's actually not a data war. It's actually not, it's a data war now. Before it was a listing war, like keeping our uh, keeping our listings off of Zillow. You know, we, we we can't we can't let Zillow get our get our information and sell it. So that fight is a ship that has long since sailed. If you are still stomping your feet about Zillow getting your listing data, you've lost the battle, all right? Just give it up because now it's about data. And so that's what KW is giving us. The more information a website has, that's where the consumer is gonna go. Like I say to my, my clients and I say to other agents, listen, your clients can look at what at listings anywhere they want. They want to go to Zillow and look at listings. Great. But that's all they're going to get on Zillow. They're not going to get anything else other than listings. And the people, the, the, the companies and the people that have the most information are going to uh, get the eyeballs. And so once the consumer gets, gets accustomed to what we offer and they're on Zillow, they're like, Oh shoot, I can't find that neighborhood info. I'm going to go to the KW site. And then uh, gradually, slowly, but surely, that's where the migration is going to start. Um, and so it's Zillow versus Keller Williams, Nextdoor, Smarter Agent, and Google. So it's four against one, right? So KW bought Smarter Agent, which was a company that created mobile apps for uh, brokerages and, and agents. And they have access to 800 MLSs across the country. And we bought them. We acquired them. And that's how we're making our new app, and that's how we're getting access to all 
uh, the listing data across uh, the entire country. So it's funny when, um, you know, if you're a team leader on this call of a market center or you're growing a team uh, and you say, oh, you know, we have a branded app and someone's from Berkshire Hathaway says, oh, yeah, me too. You go, oh, that's cute. Oh, smarter agent made that. Oh, did you know Keller Williams owns that company? You know what I mean? So it's really great leverage for us as agents and, and, and team leaders to, to know that uh, our company owns a, a tech company that builds out mobile apps. Um, and uh, I can almost, I could almost be uh, 100% certain when I say, I would doubt if the Berkshire Hathaway or Cole Banker apps continue to get rel uh, regular updates. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't know if we're focused so much on that. But anyway, next door, that's where we get our neighborhood information, exclusive to KW apps and sites. Uh, that's why we have little carved out neighborhoods with names on them. Now you can go to Zillow and you can type in a neighborhood and listings will come up. But the difference is you have to type in the neighborhood. You have to know the name of that neighborhood. And most people don't. So when they log on to our sites and our apps, we see the neighborhood name on the map. It's the default. So they don't have to, they don't have to guess uh, the names of neighborhoods. Google, um, our, our website and our app is powered by Google Maps. Um, Zillow is powered by Apple Maps. Huge difference, by the way. Just so you know, so all three of those power uh, pa uh, backed by uh, powered by Keller Williams and all the data that they have, um, I would say four against one um, is is basically uh, a battle is already a, a battle that's been won by by us. So let's jump into the three things that home buyers want, um, and this is from the 2019 uh, 2019 uh, Real Estate uh, Insights Report. Um, some of it's from uh, Google, some of it's from um, other other uh, other articles that you can see at the top of the page here, um, but uh, most of it's actually Facebook. And so, what these what these organizations have found is that uh, convenience is very important, right? So, looking for houses online 24/7, 365. Uh, consumers want to manage their own home search on their own time, wherever they are, uh, whatever time it is. Uh, that's what they want to do. They want to be in control of that. Autonomy is very important to people. Um, they uh, they tend to consult m multiple sources to find homes for sale. Uh, webs, the web, web portals, social media. Uh, the average home buyer spends 14 hours a week on social media, and 65% of those home buyers saying that are saying that they're influenced uh, directly by their friends and family that there's that they see online who are buying homes, which is really really important. Um, and then personalization is huge, right? Um, and if, by the way, if you unmuted yourself, can you just mute yourself? Let me, let me mute you. Let me mute you. Let me mute you. You're, you're going into the, you're going into mute. There you go. All right. Hold on a second, guys. All right. Okay. Uh, as people curate what they see, um, they start to re receive personalized content and 51% of U.S. um, 51% of U.S. digital device users say that they like to receive personalized content and personalized information. Uh, they will be more um, more um, inclined to make a purchase if they feel that what they're receiving is meant directly for them. And we're going to talk uh, more about how that's possible uh, in the in the in the upcoming slides. All right. So how is Keller Williams personalizing the search? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. With the consumer experience, with our apps and our websites and commands. So you got the agent operating system, which is command, and you've got the consumer experience, which is our app and our websites. Let's get into it. All right. This is my opinion, right? So if the consumer experience really starts with the ad. Like if you're lead generating on Facebook, right, that ad experience has to pop out. It has to really stand out. It has to look different. It has to feel different. It has to be something that, that buyers aren't used to seeing, right? And so uh, advertising a listing, it's a great idea. Don't get me wrong. But it's also kind of good to be a little bit different and showcase a value proposition. So let's look at from, um, from the Superior Homes Group of Keller Williams Premier ad. Let's look at that ad, okay? This ad, um, these are all ad, ads that um, that will help me get app downloads. Um, uh, and all, I ran all these ads at different different times, and I'll tell you the, the results in a second. But the first ad for Superior Homes, 
Looking for a home in Clarkson? The good rich neighborhood may be great for you. It's got top rated schools and it's close to shops and restaurants. Click more to explore. So this is a um, this is a carousel ad, which means they swipe back and forth uh, through through pictures uh, like a carousel, and they can see uh, what's going on in that neighborhood with just like five or six photos. And then when they click through, I capture their information because it's a lead generation form, and uh, they get brought to a landing page on my website, which showcases information on that specific uh, on that specific neighborhood. Um, okay, so actually, so okay, so that first one actually wasn't an app ad, that was a neighborhood ad. The second one in the middle, that's an app ad. Uh, the new Keller Williams app is here and it offers a search experience like no other, search by neighborhood, school district, and more while collaborating inside the app with friends and following the home buying guide all the way to close download today. So in this um, specific ad, I had about six different images that showed what the guide does, right? So you see the home inspection image in the middle, the one over there to the right says closing, the one over to the left um, said home search. So these are all in designs and you can take them and edit them and they show what, how the app guides them through, uh, through the home buying process, right? And then over here to the other side, the Keller Williams app, that's a page that I created um, uh, because um, what I have found is uh, when, you're, when you're running ads for your app, um, you're going to get more downloads if it doesn't look like it's coming from, uh, from a real estate agent, right? It's going to look, you're going to get more app downloads if you're advertising it. The Keller Williams app, the KW app, um, KW, Keller Williams um, consumer experience, something that, um, you know, isn't necessarily uh, you and your company, you and your team. Um, so I have found that to be very effective. And so these are screenshots that I took in each slide that showed how neighborhoods look, that showed the driving distance, that showed schools, that showed, um, you know, uh, Yelp, right? So this says Lake Orion is a sought after neighborhood with lots to offer. Take a peek and see data that Zillow doesn't offer. Like what locals say, student teacher ratios and search by neighborhood real estate is more than just a zip code. Um, Anyway, that was my best performing ad, but you have to you have to know that app download ads that advertise an app download tend to cost more money. Um, I received out of all three of these, I received 17 app downloads, and it cost about a dollar, uh, three dollars and forty five cents. So a little higher than the average, uh, which is about a dollar ninety six. Uh, but um, I'm happy to pay a dollar forty five. Uh, for an app download to take that person off of Zillow. I'll pay it any day. So um, take a picture of these three. I can also send you this slide, but these are some really great ideas that you guys can start playing around with. And you can find a lot of this stuff in designs and take the photos right off of your website like I did with the Keller Williams app. Nick. All right, here's some other ads <clears throat> that are working that can also help with the consumer experience. Um, and so the first one, and this will, this shows you how long I ran the, the, the ads for and how many leads we got, right? So <clears throat> Superior Homes Group, stop looking on Zillow. Their data is not updated in real time, could cost you your dream home. See the newest listings for sale in 4348, updated every 15 minutes, your, short, your search starts here. I got 26 leads from that, spent 25 bucks. The middle was a single property listing, um, 46 leads for 70 bucks. And on the other side with the lake, uh, it's time. To, is it time to buy a boat? Uh, buy this house first on Pine Lake, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it explained a lifestyle. It uh, showed a beautiful photo. Uh, five days, 26 leads, $25. Um, I uh, spent, if I'm not uh, all that equals 140 bucks, I think. Anyway, long story short, all of these leads uh, cost me 70 cents um, a lead on average, right, with all three of these campaigns. Um, so, <clears throat> but you got to start it off the right way. You got to start it off with an experience. You got the, the ad over here with Superior Homes Group. It's a convenience ad. It's like, hey, click on this link because every 15 minutes, things update. That's all you need. Just save that link. Um, that's like a, that's a convenience link. You can run ads uh, and I'll show you more, more uh, ideas on how to run ads that can help, help the client uh, with convenience so they don't have to go in there and search. You can run price reduction ads, open house ads, whatever, things that help the client out 
and and then keep them from having to find things on their own and sift through uh, lots of different listings. So right off the bat, you're providing value. And so providing value with ads like this and providing value with ads like this uh, kind of help you set the tone right from the beginning. All right, next door neighborhoods, right? So this is what I was saying before. First of all, sorry, I get ahead of myself. Any questions on Facebook ads? I have a really quick one. Um, for those of us that have worked just our like our da databases and our spheres, is there a way to target our Facebook friends specifically with ads? There is. I'm not going to get too much into that today, but I'm going to talk a little bit more about how you can be um, providing value to them. Uh, but when you're running Facebook ads in, in campaigns, there is a button that says target your database. Uh, and so that would, that's how you would do it. You would have to create certain lists. I can make a video on that at a later date. Um, <clears throat> but really with your database, you know, I don't think that's, I think that's a great thing to do is to use ads for them. But I also think that creating smart plans for them and keeping in touch on a regular basis, uh, setting them up on neighborhood nurtures, uh, setting them up on quarterly call plans, uh, happy birthday, home anniversary, you know, reminders to send them cards, reminders to send a text, you know, that's really more effective, I think, but staying in front of them on Facebook, it, it can definitely help. Um, but you have to mix that with, with uh, actual touches, you know, human, human touches through, through phone calls, text messages, cards, birthdays, anniversaries, you know, things of that nature. And so that's why it's really important for you to have all everything in your um, database filled out. Like, make sure that your health score is as high as you can get make sure everyone that you know has an address attached to them make sure everyone you know has a birthday and a home anniversary and just make sure all those things are in there um, so you can consistently keep in touch with them on more of a human level as opposed to like um, a facebook level like ads what i would also say is to set tasks for yourself to um okay so you know comment on five statuses today of my friends right or text five of my friends or send five instant messages on Facebook. These are tasks that you could be setting every week for yourself uh, through smart plans um, to remind you to like be more human and to be uh, more involved in people's lives through social media. That's how I would do it um, because it's a lot more, uh, it's a lot more human. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense for me. It's just, I have maybe 2000 Facebook friends and not all of them on my database and I want to keep staying in front of them. Yeah, so you can you don't have to set tasks for specific people. You can just set general tasks. You know, mm -hmm. go to Facebook yeah. and comment on five statuses. You know yep. what I mean? Perfect. Thank also, you. yeah, no problem. Also, getting your Facebook friends' Facebook profiles in your database because there is a section for that. That's important too. That'll help with your database score, and it'll also help when you're targeting your database because um, while Facebook can target your database with name, email, phone number, and physical address. If you have their Facebook profile in there and you want to target your database, that'll also help it get more specific to make sure it gets in front of the right people. Hey, Nick, uh, uh, what, what link did you send people to for the stop looking at Zillow ad? Where do you send those people? Is that Jennifer Rachel? No, this is Cornelia. Oh, Cornelia, I thought it was Jennifer Rachel. It sound, you sounded so familiar. I was going to say, because in the middle here, that's Jennifer Rachel's listing. I wanted to show her that I did that. All right, um, I sent them to, Cornelia, you sound just like an agent in my market center. Um, that I sent, them to a, I sent them to my website where I carved out a, um, uh, I created a, uh, created a search for, for homes for sale in 4834, and they went back to my website. So um, if you just go to your website and create a search and copy and copy that link, um, it'll save forever and you can just use that. Okay, great. Hey, this is Clint. Can I ask a question real quick? Sure, Clint. Hey, uh, my uh, technique had been to drive people to the actual listing that they had been inquiring about off of Zillow and drive them to use that as a capture page and then have a pop-up offering an additional search of similar type homes. Um, is that a technique that anybody else has tried a lot recently? I haven't done that in a while. I'm not sure I understand what you mean by so driving. Now, yeah. oh, what, I did, what I found is there's frustration with people who would go to Zillow and they have limited information. All they have is static pictures. They provide, I, I would provide a video on a separate page, a capture page, with a pop-up that says, hey, if you don't like this particular house, we have others. 
it comes down to, you know, if I, if you don't want this house, I'll sell you something different type, type of pop-up. So were um, you doing retargeting with that then? Yes. That was oh, the idea well, to yeah. target them as buyers and then and push them back to my website as often as possible for other properties. Yeah. I have another page set up with, with, um, uh, IDX for a certain niche that I like to work so that they come back to that certain niche. Um, and it's all populated with just a certain price point in within that uh, type of niche. Yeah. If you're doing retargeting, um, which is continuously saying in front of people, um, you know, you can add a Facebook pixel to your website, which will help with that. Um, but basically what you're doing is if you're getting leads from Zillow and they're coming into your database, uh, and then you're staying in front of them with homes that are similar to the one that they inquired about on Zillow. That's a great, uh, that's a great, um, uh, a great uh, strategy. Also, if you don't want to do retargeting and you are getting leads from Zillow going into command, um, you know, just giving them a call or sending them an email or and, and a text message with homes that are similar to the one they inquired about. That's obviously the easiest way to do it. Um, retargeting, um, while it's simple, it can be a little bit advanced and scary for a lot of people. Um, so there's both of those strategies are great. So yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. I have not been able to crack the code on how to place that pixel properly and effectively. Do you have a tutorial on that yet, or would you be able to cover that at some point for maybe a little in the, small in the, in, in our websites? Yes. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a spot for it, and I can I can I can I can help you guys out with that next time. Can you show us a, just a, even a, just a short video explaining how to yeah. do it? You know, copy this, paste that, click this. For sure, That'd be awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I can do that. All right, so next door neighborhoods. This is what it looks like when someone signs on to your uh, to your to your website or your app. Um, you can see lots of uh, you know the little lines here. These are taken from next door. Um, and then we have the names of the neighborhoods. And so this is what people see when they log on to your website or app. And they're just not used to seeing this. And, um, you know, they don't need to know that it comes from next door. You can tell them. Um, I don't think it says on the website where the neighborhoods come from specifically for this. Maybe it does. I haven't checked. It's probably in very small fine print. Um, but either way, it's, it's, a great, um, it's a great way to, uh, to get a lot of clear. This is why we're seeing so much. Uh, user activity on our website because when you click like you can set someone up on a search for a neighborhood only right so like i live in an in a subdivision of 200 homes if i have someone that says to me nick i only want to live in walden creek i can set them up on a save search and type in walden creek and they're only going to get listings when listings go for sale in my subdivision that's it so that makes it so much easier, right? Obviously, I want to check in on them every so often in case they change their mind. But I have some, if I have someone who wants to live in the Gregory Terrace section, uh, Bloomfield, New Jersey, I'm just going to set them up. Oh, I want to live in this area. Or I want to live here, Broughton Avenue. This is where I used to live. Oh, I used to live right. This is where I moved. This is where I lived before I moved to Michigan. This was my street right here, just so you guys know. Um, but I would set them up on Broughton Avenue. I want to live on this stretch of road. Okay, cool. I'm just going to set you up on in this Broughton Avenue neighborhood. Right. Um, so it's really it's that's a great uh, that's a great aspect to our consumer experience. We're like, you don't have to set someone up on a whole zip code. Nobody looks for houses in a whole zip code. They just don't. They look in a zip code and they look at different areas of the zip code. Right. Because this neighborhood, Brown Avenue, was in a district called Demarest, Demarest School District. And so it was very highly rated and a lot of people wanted to live there. So if someone said, I really want to send my kid to Demarest School District. But great, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set you up on a search for Broughton Avenue and Demarest, and then you're gonna know when houses come up for sale in that school district. Because right, this right here, this like L shape, that was that school district. So that's what I would do. And it would make everyone's life so much easier instead of setting them up on a zip code and then having to look and see if it was in that school zone, and this way I know. So that's another way to improve our consumer experience through search. Landmark search. Have you guys checked this out I'm going to veer away from my PowerPoint for a second, and I'm going to go to my website. Yesterday, uh, we released the ability to search for a landmark on your app. Um, it was on the website for a couple of weeks, and now it's on your app. It's not something that's totally prominent right now. You have to explain it to a consumer, and the reason why is because I think they're still kind of testing it out and improving it, so they don't want to throw it in people's faces like blatantly, but as an as a agent, it, it's a conversation point. 
So can someone give me a landmark? Just give me like a, like a park or a school or it could be anything really in the entire country. Soldier Shoot it Field. Out. What? Soldier Field. Did I spell it all right? Yep. Is that it? Yep. And then you back up and then you start to see neighborhoods around Soldier Field and homes for sale around Soldier Field. And another cool thing is you can also do satellite. So it's like it's Google Maps with IDX laid on top. So if someone's like, I need to live around Soldier Field, great. Let's just type it in. And then here's here's the neighborhoods. And as I zoom out a little more, um, homes that are for sale. Oh, you know what? I have um I have to reset these. Let me reset. So then everything for sale starts to pop up around Soldier Field in the different neighborhoods. So it's Google Maps with an IDX overlay. Uh, pretty cool if you ask me. Um, so let's say someone wants to um, you know, live near I'll just put in this is a popular school in my area. Uh, Nick, I really want to send my kids to Pine Knob Elementary School. All right, cool. Let's look. There it is. That's Pine Knob. And I want to zoom out. And then here we've got neighborhoods uh, that start to pop up around Pine Knob. And that'll help uh, people um, looking in that area. Let's say somebody. Let's say somebody uh, is going to work near, um, I don't know, let's say going to work for uh, near General Motors. There's the Renaissance Center, right? Yeah. I'm not going to try to even spell Renaissance. How do you spell Renaissance? <laughs> I'm the worst speller in the world. Um, give me another. Oh, you know what? This is a cool one. Let's say, let's say someone's going to work in the White House. There's the White House. And I'm going to back up. And then I start to see homes for sale around the White House in DC or, um, uh, you know, so any, like this is on right now on your website and on your mobile app. You can't set up searches based on landmark, but your consumers can search based on landmark. You want to see something super cool? I love this. Like, let's say I need to live near the Empire State Building. So there's the Empire State Building, and if I want to look at the map now on your on your app, it's cool because you get the you get the 3D, you get the new 3D uh, Google Maps display on your phone. So I just think it's a really cool feature, and literally any um, any landmark that Google Maps has on it will show up um, through a search. So I just think that's a really fun new way to search for homes that we could be telling our, our clients about. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Let's go back to um, go back to my presentation. So that's a landmark search. And when you click on it, um, obviously it pops up like this and you can look on Google Maps and look at more information about it. All right, now I showed you, um, I showed you how to do different searches. I showed you how to create different ads that that help improve the customer experience. Um, and we need to know how to follow up with those people accordingly. And luckily we have smart plans. And some of those smart plans, some of those smart plans are um, are custom that you build on your own. And then we have uh, smart plans that are already made for us that KW made and that we can go in and edit. So you got a neighborhood nurture, you got quarterly call plan, you got birthdays, home anniversaries, whatever you want, it's there. Uh, in the smart plan library, these are the ones that are pre-made and you can go in and you can edit the text messages. You can't add to the smart plan that's already created, um, but you can edit any sort of text messages that are in there. But if you're making your own uh, from scratch, you can do whatever the heck you want with them. So, you know, custom smart plans. And so I just had an example here of how to kind of be... Um, 
aware, socially aware of what's going on right now. And I'm going to show you an example of how you can run ads uh, that can start off the consumer experience that uh, that without seeming tone deaf, right? In terms of how things are right now in the world with COVID. So hi, um, hi Nick. I put some homes on Facebook, and you clicked on a few. You may not be ready to buy just yet, and with the current climate, it's difficult to see homes in person. I can send you some videos of the home if you like. It's no trouble. So this this is kind of like how I might start off a conversation on a smart plan with a new lead, uh, with an existing uh, client who I'm working with. You know who I might be active. Hey, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I just want you to know, like, I can't show you houses right here in Michigan. We can't, um, but. I'm happy to get you a video from the seller uh, if you're interested in seeing that house. Uh, you want me to get that video from you uh, from the seller's listing agent? You know, these are things now that you can improve the current uh, client experience with people that you're already working on. So working with. So if it's not through Facebook and it's through your database, uh, it's through people that you're actively working with. You know, let them know how how the how the market's doing and how they can still see property. Don't let them get their hopes down. You know, give them a solution. Another great way to improve the experience is to send people things like, this neighborhood's really popular. I thought you might want to take a look at it. Let me know if you have any questions. And so I send them a link to, um, to, uh, to a neighborhood on the website, right? So the way, like if I'm working with somebody or if I have uh, a client that might be interested in something, uh, a specific neighborhood, getting people familiar with how our, how our, um, how our website is set up uh, so let's let's go to um, let's look at um, so if I want to send them Brown Avenue and Bloomfield right so if I have someone who I'm working with actively and I think they might like this area I'm just going to click on Brown Avenue and I'm going to click if on my desktop and click Explore and um, so this link right here, I can just copy an email or text to them, right? And so this is great because it just kind of shows them everything that we offer in these neighborhood searches on our website, what locals are saying, um, you know, healthy foods. This lets them understand whether or not they would fit in in this neighborhood, right? Um, you know, calculating um, a transit time, a commute time, nearby schools with student teacher ratio and then of course the Z the Yelp uh, the Yelp search which I, I love a, a lot of things one of my favorites and then down here um, you know they can look at other neighborhoods um, there was something I wanted to show you oh so uh, if you're doing it from the app so I have a Chrome uh, Chrome computer so I downloaded the app on my computer uh, by the way, if you if you have a Chromebook um, or a Chrome la or a Chrome desktop, you can download the app on your on your desktop. So that's kind of a cool thing that you can do. So, let's say I'm gonna do. Oops, I spelled that wrong, right? Broughton Avenue, Bloomfield, and so this house is gonna be here. So. If I want to just bring this up and I want to, I want to um, share this with them, I would just text them this. I would just text them this link. I think because it's on my computer, I don't have all the capabilities. But just share with them, share with them uh, the information uh, about the neighborhood from your phone. Just text it to them, and it will go right to their phone. So this is just another great way to start sharing. Uh, information about different about different neighborhoods uh, directly from your phone directly from the app uh, all right so that's a way to add value and the way that you would add value to a uh, drip campaign is if somebody was inquiring about a specific house or a specific neighborhood you can add that's those text messages to your smart plans right and so the great thing about these links, I've shortened it with a link shortener. You can find one on Google, bit.ly.com. But a link shortener is a great way to shorten a link, make it look more user-friendly and clickable. And every time they click it, it's in real time. So anything that updates on the MLS will update within, within that neighborhood link. So you don't have to always go in there and continuously change it. 
um, it will stay like that forever. It'll live like that forever. So that's a great way to add value when you're trying to show uh, consumers what our what our technology does for them. So here's some follow up I plan ideas, right? Like things that you can things that you can follow up in terms of with having purpose. Like before, I was telling you that buyers get frustrated when you know on the when your follow up is completely like you know canned. It doesn't have anything to do with them. Um, but this is after you know you you've sat with them and, and and you went through the process and you got to know them and you know what they're looking for, right? Sending them homes in in school districts that they're interested in, homes near certain landmarks, homes near their place of work. So if you know where they work, you can calculate you know, the the distance from the home or neighborhood uh, in that feature on the website and send them those homes. Homes near great restaurants because you have a Yelp integration. So if you know what kind of food they like to eat, you know you can send them those homes. Homes in specific neighborhoods and recently reduced homes. Uh, when you're searching on your website, you can look for homes that have been reduced in the last seven days, and you can send them homes like that. So these are uh, six really great ways to make your follow-up have purpose and make it more personalized. Because like I showed you before, 51% of buyers say that they're more inclined to make a purchase if they feel like their search is personalized to them, and this is these are ways that you can do it. All right, so this is a really quick, 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 quick video. It has no sound. It just takes you through the different steps on how to create a smart plan. I have a 90-minute video on smart plans on my YouTube page that you can watch that I did last week, um, and it's very long. Um, you can watch it at your leisure. It, it walks you through more of it, but this is a very quick um, overview of kind of how you would do it. So you click Create. You would give your smart plan a name, and it would then create the canvas for you, and then you would add a text message or an email or a task, whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to add a text message here, and we're going to just type in uh, the message, and we're going to merge the field. So it'll take their information, their first name from their contact profile, and merge it there so you don't have to. That way you can add multiple people uh, to a smart plan and not be concerned about what uh, about not personalizing it. So this would be a text message. Obviously you have to set Twilio up um, in order to uh, in order to launch this. And then you can either type your first and last name or put the merge fields for your first and last name. The reason why you would but the merge fields is if you have a team, um, they're about to release the ability to share smart plans in the next week or two. And so putting those merge fields for the agent first and last name will uh, will be easier if you have a team because then your agents will be, will have just have those merge fields available to them. So this is adding it uh, adding a, a, an email. So I'm adding, a, a, I'm sending a text and an email at the same time. Uh, no, I set a delay before of one day, and then this is going out the next day. So <clears throat> text on the first day, set a delay for a day, and then the next step, which is an email going out on day two. So it's three steps and two touches. And then we save that. We save each step as you go. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to set uh, a task. And the task, uh, I'll put the name of the task when I'm going to do. So I'm going to call the person, right? And then in the description, you know, you just basically, well, you could write it in the task name or you could put that in the description too. So I would do that one day from the last email. And then maybe, oh, I think this is the end of it. So I've just created four steps and, and uh, three touches. And obviously it can be as long as you want, and then you save it, and then you can add anyone you want. That's how you build out a smart plan. It's pretty simple. Does anybody have any questions up until this point?
All right, cool. Uh, let's move on. All right, awesome. Uh, so uh, we are now going to talk about uh, Domino's Pizza and Amazon. <laughs> uh, so the reason why I'm showing you Domino's Pizza is because this is how Josh team, our president, has explained the home buyer guide. Uh, it's the Domino's Pizza Tracker of real estate, right? Every other uh, company um, has the ability to track when things are happening. You know, if you place an order on Domino's, you know when it was placed, when they're bake, when they're prepping it, baking it, and you know when it's out for delivery. I mean, on DoorDash, you can see on a map where the guy is on the street. With Amazon, you can see when it was ordered, and you can see, you know. Uh, when it was shipped out for delivery uh, and then you can see when it was delivered they, they take a picture and they add it to your app right so why didn't we have that for real estate but now we do so the on-demand information right we have the ability to create our own buyer seller guides now on your website uh, and on your app you have um, you have templated buyer and seller guides now I highly 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 suggest that you go in and you edit them in command. When you go into command, you go into the consumer portion and you go into guides and then you edit your guides. And I'll show you in a second how to do that. But the reason why it's so important to edit your guides is because you want the guides to reflect the way you do business. If for some reason, you don't, if you don't edit your guides, your buyer and sellers are gonna look at those guides, right? And if you don't know what those guides say, then the communication is gonna be way off, right? So if you don't customize them the way you do business, the way you guide someone through a process of buying or selling, then there's really no point for the guy and your consumer is going to be frustrated. And so there's a couple different ways that you can track uh, the guide, right? The consumer knows which step they're on. And when a step is completed, they can click mark step as completed, right? They can also go forward and back to see what the next steps are. Now, in when you're in a transaction, if you know when when you're when you're when you meet somebody, right, or when you when you go on that first appointment for a listing or or a buyer, and you you sign that person, then you add them to your opportunities, and within opportunities, you go into their buyer or seller profile, and you can actually check off the steps when they're completed. Um, so they can do it or you can do it. If you do it, they get a push notification on their app telling you, okay, uh, inspection is now done, right? So how many times have you said, uh, how many times has the seller said to you, hey, can you, or can you let me know when the buyers are done with the inspection? And then you forgot, You're like, oh my God, because we've all done it. Oh, you forgot, it's been like five hours, the inspection's done, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell my seller, I forgot to call my seller to tell them they can go home. Now it's easy because you could just click completed and then get notified. Done. Super simple. You don't have to remember the text them or call them. So just make this part of the second nature. You know, you reviewed offers, inspection, whatever it is. You check each portion off or they can do it. It's their Domino's Pizza Tracker. Um, and through every step of the process, you're letting them know. So you can see I, this is an example of me as, uh, um, editing my buyer guide, right, for the current situation. For the consultation, the consultation is important because this is the first step of the process where we understand your wants and needs. So we want to make sure we show you the properties. Due to the current circumstances of COVID-19, this will be conducted digitally uh, via FaceTime or Zoom call. So you want to make sure that everything is is socially aware at this point, right? You're not going to be like, we're going to meet sitting right next to each other holding hands going over the buyer process. No, because that's not the way things are going right now. So you want to make sure that um, everything relates to uh, the current environment, no matter what. All right. Next step, customizing your guides. Here's some examples of my guides, right? So um, I don't sell homes anymore. I had teams up until December 31st, but um, when I took over the tech position, I decided to step away from running teams. But we always had an animal shelter donation. Right? So every property we sold, we donated $100 to the local animal shelter. And that was super fun and rewarding. <clears throat> and so if I had this, if I was still running my teams, this would be in my guide. And every t and when the deal closed uh, and we donated that money, I would check that off 
in this area, and then the, 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 the buyer or seller would know that we donated the money. Like that would be a cool notification for someone to get. Oh, that's so cool. Nick and his team donated the money. Yay. Right? I think that's so super fun. And then housewarming time. You know, time to have a housewarming party or whatever. It, it, add things to the buyer guide that they can look forward to, right? Because everything is stressful in a home transaction. Like the consultation, the home search, pre-approval, showing the house, reviewing the, these are all stressful, not fun things. But then at the end, if you have them, you have fun things and things for them to look forward to, uh, it kind of helps uh, add to, it kind of helps lessen the stress. If you're going on a listing appointment, make sure that everything that you talk about during the listing consultation is reflected in your guide. So if you offer staging, if you offer professional photography, if you offer marketing on the internet, you know, those things should be there. That way, when you actually go in and do it and you stage the home, you can check off that it was staged and then the seller knows. When the photography is scheduled and complete, you can let them know by checking that stage off. When you've uploaded um, marketing to the internet uh, with Facebook, mark that off once that's uploaded so they know you did it. This is a fun one too, mortgage pre-approval, right? For a seller, if you um, get a, get a, get an offer and accept it, the mortgage pre-approval is always like the most nerve-wracking. Oh my gosh, are they gonna get the approval? That's a fun push notification for your seller to get on their phone. Um, you just click it and it, it gets pinged to their phone through the app and they know uh, that the buyer got their pre-approval, which basically means that you're going to close. So everyone loves that. Um, and so these are things you can add to your, your guides, charitable donations that you do, any sort of housewarming, staging, professional, photography, mortgage pre-approval, go in there and customize it. Um, did I give you, oh, you know what? I forgot to throw the guide in there on how to customize. Let me just show you real quick. I have it here. Um, let me look for it. One second, one second. I think I have it in here. Give me one second, guys, because I have a video. I just want to show you how simple it is. Bear with me, bear with me. I think it's in this one. Digital and branding. Promote your app, create texting. What the heck did I get? Oh, here it is. All right. This is uh this is how simple it is to customize your guide. You go into the into the consumer section of, of command, and you basically just like give the card, give the section a title, a subtitle, like basically what uh, what that portion, uh, what you're gonna do during that portion. And then you grab a photo. Uh, you can get it from Designs or from Google, and so add it, and then boom, you're done. And if you want to, and then you go over here, and you can add more information. You know, if you want to add more stuff in there uh, to explain it a little bit more, if they click on it in the guide. Um, so then you save that, and then you can move things around. So if you want to move tabs around to reorganize them, you know, you can do that too. And once that's saved, um, it reflects immediately on your app and on your uh, website, like basically within seconds. So, um, does anyone have question about anyone have questions about guides and guides? Yeah, guides. <laughs> anyone have questions? Okay, cool. Let's move on. Is everyone still there? Just someone say hello because I can't see you. One person saying still here. Very informative, Nick. Hello, hello. Wow. Oh, hello. I don't want to be. I was talking to myself. No, I'm kidding. You're doing uh, great. Okay. Oh. So customize your pages. Be socially aware. Right now, I highly suggest every single person uh, create a page on their website on how you help someone through COVID-19. And the reason why I think that's important right now to create this on your website is because it's great for um listing consultations and buyer consultations and it's great to add to um follow-ups right like hey i'm real like a buyer so i'm really worried about COVID 19. okay well you know what i happen to have a whole page on my site and how we're going to combat that let me send that to you right so it's it's important to have that on your website and so um, if you go to my website 
over here, COVID-19 safety measures, you know, it's right here, I have it. You can create it um, and add it to your drop-down menu. And, you know, I threw in a picture of Lysol wipes because I just did this really quickly as an example. Um, and then obviously asking the right questions. So here, I think it's very important um, that it says, if you're a seller uh, and are comfortable showing your home, we recommend staying proactive by wiping down surface areas. We will be asking additional pre-qualifying questions to potential buyers regarding their recent travel and any symptoms they may be currently or previously experiencing. Potential buyers stating um, or showing any potential symptoms will be kindly asked to postpone their viewings. In regards to open houses, we've made the difficult decision to postpone those. If you have, if you haven't, great. This is just an example, as having large groups of people through your home is not wise at this time. Also, what I would also say in this, in this uh, what? What was that? Okay, we good? Someone looked like they were like making a weird sound. Also, um, you know, uh, only allowing uh, uh, buyers in that you know have a pre-approval. You know, so so buying your home and then selling your home. The whole point is you can add custom pages to your website um, that are timely and that, and that makes sense and make people feel comfortable, which helps uh, improve the customer experience. So customizing your site pages uh, to be socially aware right now specifically. Would that All right. be considered a landing page, Nick? Yeah, I have, land, I have a landing page. I'm going to show you how to do it. So basically what you just built, Nick, that COVID-19 was a landing page no, no, no. This was on my, I put this on my actual site. Okay. Like, so when I went in to build a landing page, I chose site pages and not, not standalone, not like standalone page. Like I built it into my website. Gotcha. So the way you, pages are we allowed now, Nick, on our, on our uh, site? I don't know that we have a limit. Do we have a limit? I'm not aware of a limit, but I'll have to check. I was told three or four originally. Well, right now I've got four. I've got so, more than that. Yeah. I've got more than that. So yeah. So then you can have more. Maybe at first it was only more, but I added this to my website. So this is my website. You click here, and then it just leads you to this page. So, um, all right, cool. So uh, let's talk about let's talk about um, Yelp and Netflix, right? So. These are huge because you get a lot of questions about what's in the area. Like, are there any good restaurants in the area, right? Are there any good, you know, whatever in the area? And so, with our Yelp integration on our, on our landing pages, Yelp is a, is a site that that um, that people trust, and um, it gets ranked very high in searches. And uh, what I was talking about before was uh, if you have people that um, you know want to live like near a gym, for instance, right? Here's a gym. Um, you'd say, oh, this neighborhood uh, is near a gym. So I'm going to send this to my client and be like, this is near a gym. And then there's a gym here and there's a bar and there's restaurants, you know, and so um, cafes. So yeah, the Yelp integration is very powerful. You can't get that anywhere else. And it's, it's a, you can't get that on Zillow or, or anything. And it's, it's a site that people trust. Uh, now this is the Netflix of our website. So I showed you before, like when you're looking on a, when you're, the reason why the, the, the reason why people spend so much time on our website, like eight and a half minutes, is because like there's so much to click on. When you get to the bottom of a neighborhood page, they're gonna see other neighborhoods that are similar uh, to the ones that they're looking at. Let's look at the similarity. Average price point in this neighborhood, 271. Here, 280. Here, 332. Here, 226. These are all very similar price point neighborhoods. And so that's something cool that our site does is it like, it shows people much like Netflix. If you like this neighborhood, you might like this one. And so people just keep clicking. You can click through to these, you know, and just get sucked into this like, like rabbit hole of, you know, neighborhoods. And so I think that that's really beneficial at the bottom of each page, the ability, uh, and on the app too, the ability to continuously look at neighborhoods that are similar to the one that they're currently on. And that's the Netflix version of our site right now. And it's also gonna get more smarter as, as our app and our sites grow. Um, that is going to be more curated, uh, depending on the different types of homes they search and look at. Um, that's gonna be, that's gonna become um, a lot more, uh, oh, I did put the guides thing here. I think I put it in the wrong spot. So let's just go over it. 
pass through that one. It's going to be much more, um, much more customized as time goes on, where it will start to understand a lot more the different homes that people are looking at on our app and on our site, and then start showing homes like that over homes that might be new on the market. It'll start showing homes that are that fit into the way people are searching. So that's gonna that's gonna be coming down the pipe um, in the near future with our technology. All right, creating digital pages, digital standalone landing pages. I'm gonna show you how to do this in a second, and then I'm gonna give you an example. So right now in Michigan, I think most of you on the call are in the Michigan Ohio region, but um, we can't show homes. Um, probably until the end of the month. So it's very important to give as much information to prospective buyers or current buyers for that matter um, on uh, as much about the property as we, as we can. And so I'm going to show you how I built the landing page. But first, I'm going to show you the different aspects of the landing page. So I took a listing, 1551 Resolute Street in Celebration, Florida. My good friend Ken Posick, who used to be in Detroit, moved down to Orlando, and I'm using his listing as a, an example. Um, but this house in Celebration is in the Celebration neighborhood. And so on the landing page, it starts off like this, Celebration Market Trends. And it gives you active, uh, accurate information about uh, active listings and sold listings. And then you go to the single property page. So it's all merged together. You drag and drop these different widgets um, and you build out this beautiful page. And so first it starts with neighborhood snap, then it goes to single property page. Then you scroll down a little further and you've got the video. So this is like the virtual tour. And Ken makes videos for every single one of his listings. Um, but if you can't physically get into a listing right now, I would have a seller do it uh, with their phone and um, you can be creative with that and upload it to YouTube and throw it onto a page. And then of course at the bottom, there's a call to action, whether they wanna download your app or if you want more info on this home, leave a note below. Now the page itself, when it's all said and done in real life, looks like this. So um, you can see the neighborhood snapshots at the top. When you scroll down, uh, you can click here. Oh no, this is the house, uh, this is the video. This is the front of the house. And then you've got information about the property here. And then you've got all the photos from the MLS. And this automatically does this for you because the KWLS is built into our technology. So you don't have to upload anything at all. You don't have to even put the description. It's already all there for you. And then you've got more descriptions from the MLS. And then you've got the map. And then you've got the video. So here's the digital walkthrough of the house. And you click the video. You know, you see Ken taking us through the listing. And then um, here's information about you. And then here's a call to action to download the app. And then this is obviously if they want more information. So this is kind of a cool page to do now in this digital um, situation that we're in and promote this and um, send it to potential buyers or, or, or you know things of that nature, people like that in your database. Uh, and it gives them enough, it gives them more information than they would normally get and it allows them to, you know, essentially kind of walk through uh, the neighborhood and walk through the house and, and, and get more detailed info than they would have. And it's great to run this in a Facebook ad. Um, and this is uh, an example of that, right? So I created this for Ken for his listing. And it says, in the current climate, it's difficult to see homes in person. We have you covered. Go on a video tour of this beautiful celebration Florida home without leaving your couch to learn more below for digital access. When they click learn more, they get taken to a landing page, uh, a lead generation form uh, that captures their info, and then they get sent to the page that I just showed you. So then they get all the info. So I'm testing this out for Ken, um, for my own knowledge, to see what type of, uh, to see what type of feedback I get, see what type of leads I get. But that's an example of an ad that you'd be running now uh, to help the consumer uh, see homes when they can't physically get inside them. All right. Keller Mortgage. We talked before about how uh, buyers on average in 2019 only had about 12% down. Everybody would love to have that 20% or as close to 20% as we possibly can. And with Keller Mortgage, we can help them get closer by helping them save money. Um, so in the new update of our app, if you have not updated the app, the new version is out, go to your app store or go to Google Play and update it. 
Um, if it's already been updated in your phone, then you may already have automatic updates. But you'll find a couple new versions of, find a couple new things. And so Keller Mortgage, the placement of Keller Mortgage, and the placement of you, your face, you know, right here. Before, you had to, like, look all over the place to find you. But now you're right here. Uh, when, they click, when they click the More button at the bottom, oh, let me get out of here. When you click this little More button at the bottom, you see your face up here. When you click View Profile, um, uh, it takes you to more information about your agent. Uh, they've removed the, they've made the Remove Agent button much harder to find and see. Uh, so it's not so front and center in your face. People were uh, upset by that. But anyway. When they click Keller Mortgage on the app, they get taken to the Keller Mortgage page. Yes, I'm working with a KW agent. And they search for your name. And then you come up. They click you. And then they see your beautiful face. And they click continue. And then they get taken to the Keller Mortgage um, pre-approval page. On every listing, which we used to have before, it'll show them, okay, on this house, you could potentially save $4,100. Right? So... This is great. This is a great um, uh, value add for your consumers to let them know, oh my gosh, like if we bought this house, we could maybe save $4,100 because zero plus is zero lender fees, zero origination fees, and any loan over $150,000 is $1,000 back uh, towards um, third party costs. So with the origination fee and the underwriting fee and the processing fees that they don't have to pay, it, depending on what, depending on how much they're going to put down, they could potentially save up to forty-one hundred bucks, and that might put more money in their pocket for a higher down payment. So someone who had twelve percent might have eighteen percent now because there's forty-one hundred bucks they don't have to spend. Um, so this is a way to help people uh, get more money towards a down payment, and also it's there to protect your commission. Uh, would you give me a rebate? No, but I can save you forty-one hundred bucks. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So. That's a pretty easy objection handler to overcome uh, when it comes to Keller Keller Mortgage. All right, um, let's uh, move on. Oh, this was, uh, I forgot that I had this in here. Um, talking about the app earlier. So the home DNA is basically how your app is gonna get much smarter over time. And this will also increase the customer experience. Um, so uh, over time, you're gonna have the home DNA and the home DNA is gonna be right up here. It's this, this um, blue oval, uh, uh, with a percentage sign. And so as the app gets smarter over time, we don't have this yet. This is going to be further down the line, but they're working on it. Um, this is where the artificial intelligence comes in. As your consumers search more on the app, it's going to recognize homes that they might like over, over homes that they might not like. And, the, and so they'll see a rating, much like a Netflix rating. There's a 93% chance you might like forensics files because you watched Law and, Law and Order SVU. That's what my wife's Netflix account looks like. It's very strange. But anyway, she likes anything having to do with murder and, and, and police officers. Don't ask me. But a very high rating on her Netflix. 87% uh, this house uh, matches 87% of what I'm looking for. And uh, the way that your app's going to do that over time and the way this will improve the customer experience is every photo is going to be able to, the app's going to be able to read different things in the photos. So it's going to be able to understand that there's a hardwood floor, right? Um, these are tall curtains or tall windows. Uh, if it sees a bed, it's going to know it's a bedroom. If it sees a, uh, a, a refrigerator, it's going to know it's a kitchen. If it sees a toilet, it's going to know it's a bathroom. And if it's not a bathroom, I would start to worry about who those people are. But the point is, if they click the thumbs up on the different aspects of the picture in the room that they like, that's going to then start showing them more homes that meet that criteria. So if they like hardwood floors, they're going to start to see more. The more buttons they click on hardwood floors, the more homes they're going to see with hardwood floors. Now, if they decide to change their mind and they want carpet, they don't have to go in and unclick hardwood floors. They just have to start clicking more thumbs up on homes with carpets. And then hardwood floors will get pushed to the bottom and carpets will get pushed to the top. So that's a way that it's going to improve the customer experience as opposed to just showing them just listed. It'll show them just listed, but you might like this house. Um, all right, let's get into collections and save searches. This is so cool. Like they've greatly improved this with the newest update. Before you could only add one co-buyer. Do I get into co-buyers? No. Before you can only have one co-buyer. And a co-buyer is someone they can uh, invite to the app to help them search for homes. 
Um, but now you can have, you can invite different co-buyers to different collections, right? So if I wanted to create a collection, if I'm as the agent, if I download the app and I, and I want to uh, put a collection into my buyer's app, I'm on my app, I download my app as a consumer, and I create a collection. Homes to see on Saturday for Wendy, right? So homes to see on Saturday for Wendy, I create that collection, I put the homes in that collection, and then I add Wendy as a co-buyer to that collection. When Wendy accepts my request for her to be a co-buyer, she then gets this collection in her app. And so when we go out to see homes, we don't have to bring any crazy paperwork with us, all the MLS sheets that fly all over the place. We both have, uh, we both have, the, we both have the homes uh, right there in our collections. Now, when I created this, there was one, two, and then there were three uh, images here, three homes. What's great about this is one of them sold or went pending, so it disappeared from the collections. So it keeps you up to date. So like there's nothing worse than going out with a buyer and you schedule the appointment, and you get to the house and you have all the paper papers with you from the MLS and the house is under contract. Right? But here you don't need to worry about it because if, if it disappears from the collection, then it means it's under contract or it means it's sold. Um, so it's a great way to stay organized and to all be on the same page. And then you can look at a map uh, and see this collection. This is what this collection looks like. So I would start here, I'd go here, and then I come down here and see this house. It just makes it easier to, to navigate and see where you're going. Um, you can also create saved searches for your clients through command based on, uh, based on neighborhoods. So um, if I wanted to create a neighborhood around Walden Creek, um, I can add as many neighborhoods as I want to that saved search. And that goes right into uh, their app and site. So a collection is something that your clients can do on their own or you can create collections through your app and add them. A saved search is what you do through command under their profile in, in context. And so you can create saved searches on zip codes or neighborhoods and add multiple neighborhoods. Um, and so when they, when they click on uh, the view button, it opens up like this. So they can see the, 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 the neighborhoods that I've created searches for, Pine Knob, Walden Creek, Pine Knob Manor. Um, so it's very easy to follow and um, they get, continuously get updated uh, with that information. So I love that we can now do this and you can add your clients to a collection by adding them as a co-buyer and you can have like 10 collections and add 10 different co-buyers. Like before you can only add one. And so that's a cool update that we've made to the app. Um, so we're coming to the end guys. I love this quote. I put this quote at the end of a lot of my um, presentations uh, because uh, Seth Godin's a genius and, and, and a lot of things he says I love. Average feels safe, but it's not, in, it's invisible. A lot of the stuff that we have, you know, listen, is all of it perfect? No, nothing's ever going to be perfect. Is it done? No, it's not going to be done. It's never going to be done. So stop saying it's going to, you're going to wait till it's done if you haven't already dug in, right? Like if someone said to you, uh, I'm going to wait till the iPhone's done. Like the iPhone's never going to be done. And if Apple told you that the iPhone was done one day, you'd be like, "What? Screw this! I'm getting an Android." So don't don't be crazy. The iPhone's never going to be done, and technology is never going to be done. And so, all of the things I showed you that we have to our at our disposal puts us way above average, right? Um, we have companies like Redfin who are laying off agents, right? Like they're laying them off. The agents are salaried and they're furloughing them. Like companies like Compass who are laid off like 40% of their employees, right? Companies like us, like KW, we're pouring a billion dollars into tech to help you guys survive in uh, situations like this that we're in right now. And a lot of this stuff is there um, uh, that no one else has. All this stuff, most of the stuff is there that no one else has. And so um, I implore you guys to dig in, um, get familiar with it, test it out on yourself, Test it out on your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your kids, whatever. Test it all out on your kids. Create collections, add your kids, add your wife. You know, create um, uh, 
create happy birthday smart plans. I tested the happy birthday smart plan out on, my, out on myself before I tested it on anybody else. And five days before my birthday, it reminded me to send, me, send myself a card. And um, I thought that was fantastic. And then on my birthday, it reminded me, uh, it, it sent a text message wishing me a happy birthday. And I know it works now. So just test everything out on yourself. You're all above average. You're all on this call because you're interested in learning how to level up. And so um, uh, be above average because being average is just ho hum and it's everybody else. And you got all the time in the world now to figure out this tech. And when we come through the end of this and you don't understand how to use it, um, then I need you to I need you to really like take this time and dig in and, and watch videos because we have nothing else to do but to better ourselves and to educate ourselves. And so that's what I really hope that you guys start doing because the tech is really cool, right? Like it's not perfect, but it's really cool. Like, and it's so much better than it was, you know, 18 months ago. Um, and I'm pretty critical when it comes to technology. And I'm not just saying that I wouldn't take, I wouldn't have taken this tech position if I didn't love our tech, because that's not the type of person I am. So dig in, learn, teach yourself, have fun. And, um, you know, that's what it is. It's fun. So that's the end of my presentation. I hope that, um, I hope you guys liked it. And now let's just go into some questions. Anybody, anybody, anybody. Hello. Anybody Quick out there? Uh, Hi. Um, Nick, obviously this is a lot. And it's, you know, trying to learn all these different things. If you had to choose maybe like the top two to really start digging into that you feel are the most beneficial to our clients and us, what, where would you say that we should start if we're just starting to get into it all? For sure. Yeah, so I know it's a lot. So, so, so I wanted to show you guys basically what our consumers can go through, what they can experience, right? So mm -hmm. it's always a lot. And I'm going to send you the recording and you can watch it and, and, and you can pause it and, and stop it and so on and so forth. Um, what do I think you should start doing for your consumer? First of all, Oh, yes. For the first thing you should do before you start sending your app to people, and if you have sent your app to people, that's fine. But go in there and customize your guides, right? Customize your guides and, and, and curate them to you and your business. That way your value proposition uh, shines through and people, you can keep people on the same um, communication path. So like, you know, I don't, what I don't want to happen is you don't curate your guide and then you send your, you send your app um, to your to your to your buyer or your seller and then you don't utilize it and then and then they're following along and they're getting confused because it doesn't show them um, how you really do business so go in there into command under consumer and edit your guides um, and brand them to yourself and put your own images in there put your logo on the pictures and just make it um, easy to follow and mirror exactly what you're doing so for example we have a 20 page buyer consultation magazine booklet, right? That we used. Um, I would still use that in a buyer consultation, um, but everything in those pages are now gonna go on my guide. Like, because I know what happens when I leave the buyer consult, that 20 page magazine booklet's gonna go right under the seat of the car. Um, but the guide is always gonna be there on their phone. So that's the first thing I would dig into and make sure that you uh, set those ex expectations because that's what will help you do. It'll help you set expectations. Great. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else? Any, are there any questions over here in the question comment box? I just want to so that's, see. Pre that's pretty amazing the way it identifies all the uh, items in the house. Um, yeah, it doesn't do that yet. It's going to do it. Okay, got it. Got Doesn't it. do that yet. I was just showing you what's coming down the pipeline. Um, as it gets smarter, it's going to be able to. It's going to be able to read and identify pictures um, in a home, and so your clients will be able to click thumbs up on things that they love, and so then it'll start showing them more homes along the things that they're clicking that they love. Yeah, thanks, uh, Michael. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Michael. And also, what's the name of the? I told you uh, the the Facebook 2019 Real Estate Insights Report. That's what you wanted to know too. Yeah, Florida Insight Report, you said? Facebook Florida Facebook, Insight Report? No, no, Facebook 2019 Real Estate Insights Report. Got it, thank you. Okay, no problem. Hey, Nick. Hey. Oh, Lee, what's up? 
what's going on. On the collections and the saved searches, um, if I create one of those and add somebody as a collaborator, do they get a notification or anything, or will they just yeah, they get an email inviting them? Yeah, they get an email inviting them to join the search, and then they can start adding things to it too. So, like, um, if you're doing if you're doing one like I showed you, an agent to a consumer, your consumer can then add homes in there that they like and that they want to see. Um, if they invite their mom or dad or their boyfriend or girlfriend or husband and wife, uh, then the husband and wife or whoever they added can start adding homes in there that they like too. So it's very collaborative. And once they launch, launch, launch discussions on the app, um, I was talking to Jason Abrams yesterday about it. He said it's still coming. When they launch discussions, you know, you'll be able to have conversations uh, with your clients uh, around specific properties. Uh, and then it'll look a lot like Facebook Messenger. So each discussion, uh, the title of each discussion will be the property address. And so that'll be another great way to, uh, to have uh, consistent communication with your clients too. So th those two things. But, but collections are, are easy. Uh, they invite someone to a collection, uh, enter their name and email, and then that person they invited gets an email asking them to accept it. And then, and then when they accept it, um, you know, they're good to go. Awesome. Let's see. Are you sending a copy of the PowerPoint? Yeah, I could. I mean, I could do that. It's no problem. I can uh, add you guys to um, to the. Uh, I can add the PowerPoint to the email that I send out. Um, and obviously, I'm going to send you the uh, send you the recording too. So give me a few days to do that. Um, so I will send that out. Um, what's today? Wednesday. I'll try to get that out to you by Friday, if not sooner. If you're an R member, can you download for free? Uh, I if you if I don't know, I don't know if you can. I just got a couple. I just got a couple. Well, Tristan had it, and Tristan saved it and gave it to me. Um, but uh, you can get certain like certain statistics um, from it, but I think you have to pay for it. Otherwise, I just got the important stuff. Unless you know somebody who has it, and they can just email it to you. <laughs> so, you know. Any other questions, guys? You can you know how to reach me if you think of stuff later. Obviously. Cool. Thank All right. Well, listen. Oh, Will you share yeah. your YouTube channel? Quick, a minute. I having a hard time finding you on YouTube. I'll put it in the. I'll put it in the. Yeah. Let me grab it real quick. Thank you. I appreciate that. And and if you if you subscribe and then hit the notification bell. Subscribing is one thing, but the notification bell is the other thing. You'll get notified every time I upload a video uh, through email. So, so here's my YouTube channel. One second, I'll throw it in here. Um, if you, yeah, you hit subscribe and then hit notification. When I upload a video, you'll get an email uh, when I uploaded it. So you don't have to always wait. Um, for the email, although you get the email too, but usually when I upload a video, the email is coming shortly after. So I appreciate that. So, um, all right, guys, cool. If there's no other questions, uh, that's awesome. I hope you guys got value. Like I said, give me a couple days and I'll get this out to you with the with the with the access to the to the presentation and. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Shoot me an email, Nick Baldwin at KW. Um, or message me on Facebook. And uh, I hope it was beneficial. I know it was a lot of info, but I just wanted to show you everything we have that can help the consumer. And then, you know, obviously when you rewatch it, just kind of break it down and go at your own pace. Um, so everyone stay safe, have a great rest of your day. And uh, I'm always here if you need me.